All right, we're back on site and I am cutting some framing up because what we've got going right now is this right here. So we've got to frame the like breezeway connection in. I've got some marks already up there telling me where it's gonna be. And once I get that done, I'll use math, maybe a couple lasers, and I'll pinpoint the peak of my you know, roof line over here, which should be directly above the center of this building. Yeah, so I'm getting some framing cut up and then we'll go ahead and install it. Beautiful. All right, so here's my little truss and I'm just gonna frame this right to the wall. Before I do that, I'm actually going to mark out where all my purlins are gonna go. In the background, you might see Greg, he's uh, getting all the chains and stuff cleaned up and out of the way. Now that the building is up, the chains, I mean, they're cheap insurance, but we're ready to get them out of the way and uh, start cleaning up for the interior so we can get spray foam in here and then start installing our wall metal. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put this up on the wall, see how I did, see if I hit all my marks. We have a girt right here and that's what I'm actually gonna fasten this to, or this bottom cord. I'm just going to put one screw in right here. And then I've got my Stabila, which is gonna sit right in here nice. Check it for level. Now the nice thing is that we use this location down here where Greg's at on everything for grade. So we determine the grade of our building based off of this spot. So now that it's time to uh, figure out where the, you know, where everything is in relation to each other, I can just come over here and I'm measuring from that spot and I gotta go 10 foot, 10, and a half. So I gotta take my lift up a little. 10, 10 and a half is the top edge of my two by six fascia. That should be good, man. This is not my favorite way of doing it as there is some room for air, but I think with what we're doing, I do believe it's gonna be sufficient because I'm just looking to find out where I'm kind of cutting the steel. Once I know that I can do some more kind of digging deeper and finding where my trims and stuff are gonna get cut out. Cause my goal is to just utilize steel that's here, find out where our trims are gonna go and cut them, cut this steel so that our trims can tuck in. And then we can do minimal, I don't wanna have to take all this steel off. It's got nails. It would be a pain. I would never keep it uh, in good condition. I don't trust old buildings to be plumb and level or anything. Five foot, six inch run, four inch pitch. Oh yeah, 22 inches is the top of that. So that is my peak. Now what I can do is measure out. Are you gonna hold me? That's your center mark? Yeah, just hold me on that mark. And I'm gonna come out here. Burning your foot or not? No, 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 that's fine. Five foot six. Should be right there. Yep, see it. 11 feet. All right. So now I can use those to determine where my points are. I'm gonna go up an inch and a quarter. So it's kind of nice that there's a girt here. So I'll have to frame here and it's gonna be fun cutting it out though. Tell me when. Yeah. All right, man. So that's what I'm cutting. That's what I needed you for. Now I just gotta figure out, that's my fascia. I'm gonna go past it another inch and a half. For your... Yeah, then I can get this cut out get the trims here once it's blocked, get the trims there, run our purlins, easy. Come on, get it. I need a bigger snip.
Yes. Nice. All right, well, that is, in a nutshell, I think, what we want. Now I can go ahead and get some frame in here, which be a little bit easier, I think. Maybe. Let's hope I made this right, though. It looks good, but that doesn't mean it's going to fit this old building perfectly, you know? So we'll have to fish it in. Hopefully... Oh, man, that might be a little tricky. Maybe. Maybe not. A little more. About another inch or two. Come back my way. Okay, we're in it at least. Then you get your level. Just kind of take it on the inside, and then we should be able to read the level right here. I mean, it looks pretty darn good to me, and I would call that pretty darn good. Throw a screw in. Nice, we'll throw some 20s in it. I'll be ready to put purlins. Cool, dude. I mean, we'll be able to put purlins on, install roof, flash it. I got a couple nails to remove, and then I got to get some blocking back behind there for that. So I'm taking my laser distance measure now that this frame is here, and I'm going ahead, and I've actually already done this, so I just thought I should share it with you guys. Um, it's the easiest way to just go ahead and quickly, I don't know if you can see the dot over there, but pull measurements and get a nice accurate depiction as to what you got to cut. One thing I'm noticing is that this is probably, well, I think this is straight. We built it. Our posts are pretty straight, but this old building, six by sixes, that's one reason you don't like to use them is they're very inconsistent and they definitely warp more over time. So I'm noticing that this side of the building, it kind of bows out. So it's a closer dimension. And this building over here is the exact opposite on that side. And you can see that, look at our truss that we built when it comes out it's stressing the steel out because this post is out and it's forcing past here the steel or the, the wood to go in and push out so it's not a big deal i went ahead and used this that's why you don't just always trust exactly what it should be i measured each individual one and now i'm gonna go ahead and cut them and then we'll install Good enough for the girls I run with. So there we go, we got purlins, we got fascia, and now we're ready to go ahead and either lay our, we'll probably lay our roof tin now. And, but before I do that, I think to make my job easier, now that I think about it, I'm gonna go ahead and try to get these guys tucked up underneath this steel, and then I'll worry, and I should have done that before I put any of these purlins or fascia on. It would have been very easy to tuck up. Now I'm gonna have to kind of feed them in a little bit. All right, so here's my connection trim. It's gonna go up under here. I've got this little bend over that's gonna finish off the bottom. And then up here at the top, it's got a bend down and that's so my other piece can lap. Now, what I've gotta be able to do is get it up underneath this steel. That's gonna be a challenge. I think my best bet, I don't know what my best bet is. I'm gonna have to just kinda give it a whirl without having to take any steel off. Sometimes you just gotta it's gonna get some scratches on it. There is no way it won't. This is gonna be tough. Maybe. Hey. So I'm not gonna really mess with that now. I'll get the roof steel on and then we'll get it in place exactly, but I need to get the other side in now. Way. 
I did not expect that to go in. Dude, I did not expect that to go in so easily. Nice, awesome. Now, I get our, uh, I'll get our E flashing on here, drip edge, whatever, and then rough steel. And then when I get to that side, I'll do the same trims. It's really crazy how gray the burnished slate looks against a, a brown. I mean, I always thought burnished slate was more brown, but this looks more bronzy or gray when it's next to this. It's crazy. I'm so excited right now. So like most things, or honestly, most projects in construction, it seems like uh, when you start them, you're a little bit like, I don't know what I'm gonna do, especially when it's not something new construction specifically. Like right here, we're doing new construction, but we're tying into this old building. I don't ever really know exactly how it's gonna go. And sometimes you have a little bit of anxiety or you know, just un unsureness about what's gonna happen and how it's gonna turn out. But usually if you just start doing it, thank you, Greg. Oh, you got fillers? Usually if you just start doing the project, um, you'd be surprised that you can, you can just get it done and usually it turns out pretty good. This one has turned out pretty good. We're gonna start putting the roof steel on it and uh, yeah, get it covered up. And then I can build the walls, but I wanted to go ahead and get the roof structure done, get up and over this thing. So I have to drive all the way around the building as I'm working on it and then we'll build the walls. There we go. One side done. Ready for soft fascia. That's nice, strong roof. All right, guys. So it may seem a little bit backwards why we did the roof system before these walls. And I think I said it, I didn't want to close off this area. I wanted to be able to drive back and forth here to do this work. So I wanted to get the hard part out of the way. Now what I can do is I can just frame my wall. This is gonna get a ledger that's gonna go across or up and down here, defining where the girts will attach to. So in post frame, that's a great way to, you know, attach two walls. We're gonna run a two by four ledger all the way up and then our girts will die in and get nailed directly to it. And then we'll do the same thing on the old building. Over there though, I gotta do a little bit of work cause I'm gonna cut the steel out of the way so I can access the girts and get to a solid backing. So what I'm gonna do first is just take my LDM. I'm gonna set it on my trim and 10 foot four inches. That is to the top of the base trim. So what I'm gonna do is add three and a half inches to that and go 10 foot seven and a half. Well, let's see how good we are over here. That trim might be in my way. 10 four, okay, well, I'm gonna say that that's accurate enough because it worked out for my, my narrative that the building is perfect. <laughs> 10, seven and a half. I'm gonna go ahead and cut two of those, get those installed. We'll use the line laser to get a perfect plumb line up to where we've already marked and let's hope it is where we've marked down here as well. When setting up a laser, you really wanna to try to be as perpendicular to your laser line as possible. You guys can't see it, but I'm set up on this tick mark here that I just made. It's exactly where my tick mark is up there. I'll do the same thing over here, and then we'll have to do a little bit of metal cutting and preparing on this side. So I'll go ahead and get this side done and then we'll meet back over here. All right, so what I've got is a mark up there on my framing where I need to cut this metal out. Once again, use my laser. All right, I got this side ball blocked out. I've got my ledger board on. This is gonna get now installed right to my soffit board that's defining my overhang. And so now maybe it makes sense why we've got this ledger going on right here because it gives us a nice way of installing our girts. And this is where my soffit is gonna be nailed to. So now that this board is here, I can run my soffit, my fascia, and 
get steel around this side. So we'll finish this one over here and then we'll get going on our soffit fascia. So what I did was I shoved a piece of J channel. So you'll see this, this is a J channel and it just cleans up this cut edge and my soffit should tuck right in there. What I gotta do now is cut my F and J. I call it an F and J because it's an F channel with a built-in J. It's gonna allow you to have your soffit and your side steel both go into it. I'm using the staple here, this uh, crown, 18 gauge crown, I do believe it's, it is. Goes through metal pretty darn good, but uh, if you want, if you don't know when you're gonna be installing your metal, you can install some bigger nails. Just to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. For my first piece here, I'm gonna cut the male leg off. That way it'll tuck in here nice. So we're just gonna set this in. Oops. Now, if this, uh, if this cut was bigger and I had more of the flat area, I would do something a little bit different, like add something behind it so that it, it didn't flap. But since that's so close, I'm not too worried about that. It's gonna get a piece of trim right over it too. All right, that's off, it's done. We'll go ahead and uh, wait to put our fascia on until we get this piece of steel up. Whenever I'm making all these measurements, I always try to make sure I go to the rib back, not just the siphon rib because sometimes it's not as accurate. I write them all down so that I don't forget them and I can revisit them many times while making my cut. 87 and a quarter. What I'm gonna do is take a piece of this sidewall just as a guide and it's gonna go somewhere just like that. And I want to make sure my cut is about that high. So I don't want to be tight on this trim. I want to go up at about a quarter of an inch. So that's a 412 pitch. I know that. All right, I think I'm ready to mark this sheet all out. It's very important to spend the time here making sure that all your measurements are correct because you only want to do this once. Got it? All right. Keep going. I got to get in the opening. Okay. Yep. I don't think it's gonna be that hard, man. You drop it a, little, a hair. Yep, there you go. Now that we have that piece of steel up here, we can get this trim connection detail on. Both. This thing is gonna be covered in footsteps. My big goal is I wanna make sure I'm hitting my marks. Normally I wouldn't do this after it's installed, but Greg was pretty fast on getting that sheet up, so um, I'm just gonna go ahead and kinda of cut it in place. Be a little bit harder but in the end it is uh getting covered up with a ridge cap too so i'm not overly concerned okay let's see how we did so you'll see the uh the goal was overlap we've got this cut long this bent over and then we cut this long and then this comes back over so what we've got a double overlap and 
This little tiny point is about the only place that we have to worry about water. And even then, this extends up past it just a little bit. So what I'll do, let's go ahead and shoot some silicone here and then right across this point. So now what I need to do is grab the dimension here for my piece of ridge. Eight foot eight. Right there. I did all the mechanical flashing I could back here. I did this little bit of a bend up here. You still have this point. I'm gonna hit it with some silicone. The metal is gonna go over. I've got a rib landing right here. That's gonna pop it out. So water's not gonna really be able to get here. Let's assume that it does get behind this point right here. And at that point, it gets down here, you know, unless it wicks its way into this little gap right here that is siliconed, it's going to go over down. There's not going to be anything drawing it in to this peak. It's just going to naturally fall down and go out the roof. Brother, I don't even know if it gets better. That was a lot of work, man. Getting it to be, you know, level and square and everything work out going from one building to the other. You know, that takes a little bit of time at this point, but it probably took more time to on the thought side of it when we laid out the building, squaring it up, making sure that this building over here that we were putting up was parallel to the end of the old building. Uh, and that is probably where we spent most of the thinking time. This was more or less just a lot of work because we had to get everything tied in, but then just, you know, going up and over this little roof, tying everything in, making it, you know, work out. The good thing is we got the hard part done. Can I stand on this? No, 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 no. What if I do though? You're gonna knock it to the ground and then I'm gonna be pissed. I don't weigh much. You weigh all... Tell me if I'm on the thing, I can't see. Go to your, your right, your right, 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 there. Good thing it didn't fall down because I ain't that heavy. Oh, you're, you're large. 201 this morning. Thanks, man. You're a you're a legend. I don't want to be a legend. Legends always die young. It's true, but they're remembered. Hey, Greg. I just wanted to show you. This is the proper way to use a ladder. You stay down below the top rung. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I just I know that there's a lot of people that have seen us use it the you. other way. Mostly you. Because you want to know why? Because you don't give a. Because rules don't apply to me. Now, would you rather be on a ladder or on a wall like I am right now doing this?
Nice little breezeway, connect the two buildings, watertight, good to go, ready for concrete.